tools we have prepared for making an anemoscope are scissors, cotton thread, compass, crab paper, tape, black marker, holder, straw, and direction sheet. If you do not have any ready-made direction sheet, you may ask students to make their own. We can see that the north is at 0 degrees, the east is at 90 degrees, the south is at 180 degrees, the west is at 270 degrees. Ask students to make it with a protractor. The circle at the bottom of the sheet is where we will place the compass. We leave a mark at the middle of the straw. Let us measure it. This straw is about 15 cm. Leave a mark at 7.5 cm. After it is done, we put the cotton thread through the straw. Once it is done, we keep a length of about 2 cm at each end. Cut off the excess. Go with the length of the straw. We will cut the crepe paper into a long piece. Make the crepe paper's length about the same as the straw. Usually, we will cut the crepe paper in half from the middle. Sometimes the crepe paper is too heavy. It is not easy to observe under low airflow. So we need to make its weight lighter. After we have cut it, stick the crepe paper with the tape to the cotton thread. Stick the crepe paper to the 2 cm length we have kept. Once it is done, Stick the other end of the straw into the holder. Insert the straw into the holder. Next. Adjust the height of the crepe paper. It is already this high, so we still have to adjust the thread. Put it out a little. So it will hang naturally. Once it is done, we will insert it into the holder again. Now it is done. Once we have made our nimoscope, bring in the direction sheet. Once the direction sheet is set, fix the holder. I will use tape to fix the holder. Once the anemoscope has been fixed to the holder, bring in the compass. We have to align the north of the compass with the north on the direction sheet. The south of the compass aligned with the south on the direction sheet. Then, this is the step students most often forget to do. That is, the needle has to be adjusted to the north. Only then could we know where the north is. The real north should be in this direction. The direction sheet is just a convenient way for students to observe. We can take the anemoscope outdoors to test the direction and speed. We can see that the paper strip is hanging down. It is not fluttering, we will call this as comb. The paper strip is fluttering, but it is lower than the mark. In times like this, we call this a breeze. 
the paper strip is fluttering. And it is higher than the mark, so we call this a strong breeze. We will use the direction of the fluttering paper strip to determine the direction of the wind. If the paper strip is fluttering toward the west-south, we will call this wind as coming from the northeast, a northeasterly. Through this anemoscope and the height of its paper strip to understand the strength of the wind. We can also know through the direction of this paper strip's fluttering the direction of the wind. Experiment on making our own air cannon. Materials we have prepared include scissors, balloon, funnel, bottle, tape, and paper doll. First, we cut the balloon. At about halfway, cut it off. Once done, open the balloon up. Once opened, put it onto the funnel. If the balloon is not big enough, you can cut and make it bigger. Once it is on, to prevent the balloon from coming off, we will use tape to fix it. Stick a layer of tape. Make sure it is tight when you tape it. It is okay to tape a bit more. Once it is taped, the air cannon is complete. Later, we just have to pull this part and it will shoot. Next, we're going to make an air cannon with a bottle. For this part, we would advise using a blade. Remember to put something underneath so the desk underneath will not be damaged. Once done, the opening here may not be even, so you can use the scissors to trim it a little. Once trimmed, we're going to cut the balloon. Cut the balloon open at about the same place, at about halfway. Once cut, we open the balloon. If you feel the space here is too small and difficult to maneuver, you can make it bigger by cutting more. Next, this step is more dangerous. One can easily cut their hands. We advise that you ask for the teacher's help. When placing it because it is sharp around the edge of the bottle, one can easily get cut, so students should help one another. The teacher also has to pay close attention, ask students to help one another when they are putting it on. Once done, we use tape to make it tight. It is better to choose a bottle whose body is made of a harder material or has a smaller mouth. Bottles with curves will be more suitable. It will be easier to put it on. Once done. Once the tapes has been taped. The air cannon is complete. Next, we're going to test the air cannon we made. We made two kinds just now. First, we make the paper door to stand on the desk, one stone, and the muzzle of the air cannon at the paper door. Then, pull the balloon behind it. Fire! Fire towards the front. We will find the paper door falling backwards. Next, let us try the other kind. This is an air cannon made with a funnel. So aim the bottom of the funnel towards the paper door, then pull the balloon behind it. 
we will find that both coins can blow the paper door over. So, both are successful. When we use this easy to find bottle as the body of the air cannon, we can test and see without the lid on or make a small hole on the lid. Will the result of the firing of the tube be the same? We can also change the shape of the cannon muzzle or the look and do a simple test. First, we will test and see the effect of the bottle with the punched lead on fire. We will always start from this distance. Once we have aimed fire, we can see the paper door has moved a little. Then we open the lid. At the same distance, Aim at the paper door and fire. Fire! We can see that the extent of its movement is bigger. So, if the mouth of the bottle is bigger, the extent of its movement will be bigger. Once with only a small hole punched in its lead, the extent of its movement will be smaller. Students can do simple tests on their own. The principle our air cannon is based on is air occupies space, so when we let go of our hand, air will be pushed out. The experiment on making our own dropper rocket, the material we prepared includes scissors, tape, paper, syringe, pen, plastic dropper, plastic tube and ruler. First, we take the transparent plastic tube. Measure for about 2.5 cm. Make a mark on it. Once marked, cut it off. Once done, we will put it onto the opening of the syringe hub. Put it on like this. This is the launcher. Then we're going to make a rocket. First, cut open the plastic dropper from the lowest mark here. Once cut, let us try and put it onto a plastic tube. See if it is tight. If it is like now where it will not fit, you can cut a bit higher. To make its opening bigger, let us try again. We find that it is too loose. If it is found to be too loose, we can use tape to make it thicker. And make it tighter when attached to the rocket. Let us try for a bit. Still, not enough. Tie it tighter. You can test it as you do it. Let us about it. Once they're about the same girth, finish up with the tape. To wrap it to the same thickness, try to get it even with some wider, some thicker, some thinner that will make it loose. Try it once it is wrapped. Success! It is quite tight, cannot pull out. Front part of the rocket is done. Once we have made the tail fin to the dropper with paper, put it onto the syringe. First, we have to pull the plunger of the syringe out. Once pulled, put on the dropper rocket. It has to be tight here when we put it on, otherwise it will leak later. Now, the dropper rocket is ready for launch. Please note that. Do not launch at another students or people. We can aim towards the sky. 
or towards the front, but there must not be anyone in front of it. We make use the unique characteristic of the ear to make the dropper rocket. Please be safe when you play with it.